I'm going to show you how to obfuscate a very simple application with Smart Assembly. I shall show you the essential features that you need to use and I will skip through any um, advanced features that you don't need to use. So I have a very simple console application here, only about 20 lines, and I'm going to obfuscate it so that you cannot see any of this source code in the compiled assembly. You may be wondering, how can you see source code in a compiled assembly anyway? So the first thing I want to show you is that with .NET assemblies, the source code is generally available. That may come as a surprise to some of you, but I'm sure most of you will, will have half an idea at least uh, what I mean by that. But for those of you who don't, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. Here is my executable assembly. As I say, it's a very simple application. It simply calculates uh, fib of 3 and fact of 3 and totals them together. And what I'm going to do now is actually open up this assembly with .NET Reflector. And what .NET Reflector does is take any individual assembly, decompile it, and then interpret it in a specific language. Most of you will either be familiar with the C Sharp or Visual Basic. So we've gone from a compiled assembly right through to source code. And if I wanted to see this source code in other languages, that's no problem. But I'm going to stick with C Sharp. And in fact, what I'm going to do is show you what things look like at the intermediate level, the IL intermediate language. So this is actually what the .NET runtime takes as its executable code, and then finally interprets this in native uh, CPU-specific code. And of course, once somebody has got hold of this level of your code, unobfuscated, they can create a copy, edit it, and effectively they own, now own your source code. So what we need to do is change the code, not functionally, but literally, so that even when Reflector decompiles it, it's going to look like nonsense. So that's the objective for today. So here's my code in project form. Here's my main method. As I say, it's only about uh, 20 lines. It doesn't really do anything very interesting. Um, as I said, it has the factorial function and the Fibonacci function. And it only does something useful at the very end. To start off with, I've just put some general app domain code in there. It um, doesn't really do anything very interesting. But the point is that I can then show you the effects of obfuscation in more detail. So again, just to recap, this is the project source code. This is the resulting assembly. And this is the interpretation of the assembly according to Reflector. And as you can see, it's pretty much identical. So how do we stop people taking our distributed assemblies, decompiling them with Reflector, and stealing our IP? Well, that's where obfuscators come into it. So what I'm going to do is guide you through the creation of a simple smart assembly project. And smart assembly is designed to be as easy and intuitive as possible, but still give you advanced features. So creating a project, very simple, from the front page of smart assembly, click new project, browse to your assembly. and then simply set the destination. 
you could rename your assembly and save it to the same destination. That's not a problem, but I don't recommend it. The best thing to do is create a separate, separate directory, name it something sensible, and stick with the original name. If one of these days you will actually rely on a static name of your assembly, so it's best not to rename, even at that level. Of course, what you need to do is remember to, in general, copy your dependencies into the same directory. But in this case, we don't have any dependencies. So we're nearly there. It's, uh, it's that simple. If you look along the top line here, SmartAssembly has a visual representation of the features. Each one of these icons represents a separate feature. It would take me a long time to go through each of these, so what I'm going to do is just take you through the most essential features that you need to protect your application. And these are going to be obfuscation, control flow obfuscation, and strings encoding. Smart Assembly has a traffic light concept where each feature is either green, amber, or red. The idea being that the perfect Smart Assembly project has all of these features enabled um, and therefore is green. As you can see, some of these features are not necessarily needed to protect your application, and that is why out of the box they're already green. Um, but I'm not going to go through that, um, just to generally say that uh, the three features that I will go through, obfuscation, con control flow, and strings encoding, they will need to be green. So let's click on obfuscation, and the project is now prompting me to select all the assemblies that I want to obfuscate. And as soon as I've selected that, it turns to green. There are three different ways of obfuscating, all with increasing um, powers of uh, complexity. And in general, you will want to choose the highest power. But the reason why there are lower powers is because sometimes obfuscating something uh, causes problems with interaction with other code. So sometimes you have to scale down the power of obfuscation in order to interoperate. But in general, you can feel fairly confident that uh, the maximum power is the thing to use. So once you've selected your feature and the level of power that you need, you can go ahead, save your project, and then build it. And then you get onto the final page in SmartAssembly where you can access your obfuscated project now. You can open the folder, access your obfuscated project, or you can simply run it. Uh, this is a very useful feature because often, if you have multiple projects, it's very confusing to know which directory is your final obfuscated build. So it just makes it that bit easier for you. And finally, just to test that your application does the same thing as it did before. That's an essential part of this process. So really, I've just taken you through a very simple project, but however complicated your project is, those are the main steps. Navigate to your assembly, choose your features, build it, and test it. What I want to do for the final few minutes is just show, the, show you the effects of each feature on the obfuscated assembly. And I'm going to do that, of course, in Reflector. So the first thing you will notice is the class names are renamed, and so are the method names. So it's only because I've done this a few times that I actually know that that is the main method. But otherwise, anybody else accessing your assembly would not know until they spent a little time looking at the code. 
So the inter interesting thing to note here is that, as I say, the namespaces, the classes, and the methods are obfuscated, but within the fields and the code, it's back to clear text. So this is why we have to add extra features. So going back to the Smart Assembly project, we can click on project settings and review what we've done and add or subtract as we wish any extra features. As I say, what we're going to look at is the control flow obfuscation. And this will start to protect the code within the methods. Again, we have the ability to have a stronger power obfuscation or a weaker. Control flow obfuscation can change the um, efficiency of your code, and we'll see why in a minute. So this is the reason why you might want to scale the power of that back. I do recommend that you test your obfuscated assemblies um, just that little bit further. Great, it still does the same thing it did before, but let's see what it looks like in Reflector now. Okay, this is interesting. So Reflector refuses to interpret the intermediate language, whereas before, it was able to convert the intermediate language into readable C-sharp code. This time it doesn't even bother. It will give you feedback that this item is obfuscated and cannot be translated. Control flow obfuscation is very powerful, but what we can do is go back to the original intermediate language and then we can see if there's any details we still want to obfuscate. So what Reflector did is it took a look at this and decided it just could not interpret it. And that's because what control flow obfuscation does is take your readable linear code, add in lots of random go-tos and jumps and labels such that Reflector cannot work out what's jumping to where. <clears throat> and you can see within this code the, uh, the labels that it's putting in. But still, that's not quite good enough for a lot of applications, because as you can see, the strings are still in plain text. So naturally, what we want is to apply the string encoding feature. Uh, this is the icon for strings encoding. There are quite a few aspects to strings encoding, but if you just want a nice simple method, uh, select all of these boxes. Strings encoding with improved protection and compressing and encrypting your strings and caching strings when decoded. Just select them all. It, um, they're all good features. You do need to manually save your project after each feature change. But um, one little technique I find very useful is after each change, save the project with a descriptive name because you might want later to scale back different combinations of features. So let's build that and see the result. Good, it still works as usual. Open it up in Reflector.
and just like we saw before it won't even attempt to change it back into a readable language so we have to at the very least look at the IL and this time the strings are encoded so there's no way somebody could inspect this and, and get to know your passwords or your uh, sensitive connection strings so that concludes the final feature of the three essential obfuscation techniques that I recommend you use with your simple smart assembly project. You might ask, well why isn't there a, a simple button obfuscate to a basic level? So that instead of having to switch these three features on, there's just one button. Well the thing is, as I've said a few times, you should get used to testing just that little bit extra your obfuscated builds. Each one of these features may affect how it interoperates with other code. So to a quite a fine grain level you might have to test each feature and see the effect. So it is best that you have this fine grain control and making it even making it one step simpler than it is is probably going a little bit too far so I think we have the right compromise between making it um, obvious what it's doing but giving you that fine grain control giving you that feeling that you are still in control of your builds so that concludes my very basic rundown of the most essential features to use with smart assembly please feel free to give it a try download a trial copy from our website We've made a recent update to add even more features in version 6. So I hope you can use it, enjoy it, and come back to us with all your questions. Thank you very much.